You're listening to Bible Truth Feed, a podcast by Christadelphianvideo.org for Christadelphians and all those seeking the truth about the Bible message. Join us now as we present our latest episode. Jerusalem will become the future capital of the world. Hello and welcome to Bible Truth Feed. Jerusalem is well known geographically in the world, but its future is not appreciated from the Word of God. The scripture is clear that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will return to the earth to redeem and rule the world with unprecedented justice and wisdom from Jerusalem under Almighty God. Tonight, as we've already established, we're going to be talking to the topic, Jerusalem, the future capital of the world. What a fascinating topic. Where to begin? Well, to begin, I'd like to have a brief outline of what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about some early history of this Jerusalem. We're going to talk about Jerusalem at this current state, at this present time. We're going to look at what the Bible tells about future Jerusalem and what it means for us. Like Nathan said before, these are not my words. These are words that God has already said. I'm just going to repeat and explain what he's already said. We're going to look at what the Bible has to teach us. Let's have a look at early Jerusalem. Jerusalem in the Hebrew tongue means city of peace. Its first mention is found in Genesis 14, verse 18, which reads, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. Psalm 76, verse 2, In Salem and also in his tabernacle, in his dwelling place in Zion. bit of information here. In the Psalms, we see that Jerusalem, or Salem as it was originally called, had God's tabernacle. And God dwelled in this place called Zion. Zion is a place in Jerusalem. Biblical Jerusalem goes through a lot of wars, tribulations, and a lot of kings. An important king is King David, who, in, uh, in 2, Samuel 6 verse, uh, 2 Samuel 5 verse 6, we read, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem, this is King David, unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the, the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. So David, anyway, took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the great city of Zion. David reigned, and his son took the reins. His son Solomon. Solomon, in his ministry, built lots of structures. In 1 Kings 6 verse 1, we see that King Solomon in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign that he began to build the house of the Lord. He began to build the temple. Other structures include his own house and the wall around Jerusalem. So we can see here that Jerusalem wasn't a slow-moving place. There was lots of Structures being built, lots of activity, and for the most part, but certainly not for all of the time, God was the focus of this land. That's a a very brief overview of of history of early Jerusalem. We're going to have a little look at Jerusalem today. No news headlines, just some facts about Jerusalem and what we have seen previously. Jerusalem is located in, in Israel, in the Middle East arguably one of the most conflicted and fought over territories in the world right now. These fights mainly consist of ownership of disputes between the Jewish people who live there and the Arab Arabian countries surrounding. Wars are common in this region. The Arabian people claim that it is really, it is really their land which is inhabited by the Jews, which is the root cause of the strife in that goes on. 
Jerusalem is a hot spot for trouble. The disruptions to Israel with its surrounding nations are building to a crescendo. The prophet Daniel in his 12th chapter writes, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What times are we living in at the moment? We see politi- polit- political antagonisms in the Middle East. Russia's boasting power towards the nations. Nation against nation. Wars that just constantly keep going on. Surely the time for Christ cannot be far away. Let's talk about this Jewish nation. The Jews haven't always been in their land. In fact, the land of Israel only became a nation a mere hundred or so years ago. The Bible tells us that this was going to happen, that Israel would become a nation. Ezekiel 37 verse 21 and 22 reads, And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall be they divided into two kingdoms any more at all. There are three parts to this prophecy. The first is that the people that, that there will be a return of the people to their land. The second, that there will be a revival of the nation, which will be one. And that there will be a restoration of the throne with one king ruling them. There will be a return of the people to their land. Verse 21, God will gather them and bring them into their own land. That's the prophecy. There will be one nation upon the mountains. There will be no more two. There will be one. And one king shall be king to them all. 1948 and 1967. The Jewish people was given a homeland. And in 67, the Jewish people reclaimed their capital, Jerusalem. Another important year was 1917, which we will touch on later. But for now, we will just keep moving on. Now, the Jewish nation was scattered. This is prophesied. Ezekiel 12:15 And they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall scatter them among the nations and dispose of them in the countries. When the Bible repeats something this is for us to take note of. Plenty of times God has said that I will scatter his people. He'll also say that he'll gather them. Now Ezekiel 11 verse 17 has a very interesting statement at the end of it. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. It's very specific in what it's saying. Nineteen seventeen And 1948. Both very historic and important dates for the Jews. We know that Christ will be the king of the Jews. Luke 1 verse 31 to 32 states this. We'll read verse 32. He, or we'll read verse, we'll read verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Verse 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. The return of the Jews. The Bible prophesies this. We won't look at these quotes, but there's plenty of examples where the Jews will return to their land. There will be a time when the Jews won't be scattered. This is a prophecy 
of Christ. Christ says in Luke, uh, Luke 21 verse 24, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. There's a time frame here. The Jews will be scattered until that time is no more. Jerusalem will be in Jewish control upon Christ's return, as per Christ's word in Luke 21. Now, there is something very interesting concerning the retaking of Jerusalem by the Jews. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 8. We'll look at Daniel chapter 8, verse 13 and 14, which reads, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall, the vision, shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of the desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trad- trodden underfoot? He said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The year is uh, BC 333. Alexander the Great overthrew the Persian Empire and took over Jerusalem. 2,300 years later, in 1967, the Six Day War occurred and the Jewish people took back Jerusalem, perfectly fulfilling Daniel's prophecy. That's quite staggering, I think. It was prophesied all throughout scripture that the Jews would take back Jerusalem, that the Jews would be scattered and be brought back into their land. Let's move on to tonight's topic. Jerusalem will be the future capital of the world. The Bible states this. Let us look at what will happen prior to Jerusalem being set up as this capital. To say the world will change as we know it is a vast understatement. Christ is going to return, and when he does, many things will take place. The first thing that will happen when Christ returns, and it will be Christ who personally returns to the earth, as we see in Acts 1 verse 10 to 11, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why, standing, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Christ is going to return to the earth. I think it's meant to be Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And also they which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so are men. All kindreds of the earth. So Christ is coming back to the earth and people are going to see him. We read that the dead will rise. <clears throat> there will be a resurrection of the dead. Uh, upon the return of Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Corinthians 15 is an interesting chapter, talking about the resurrection of the dead. The Apostle Paul is almost being sarcastic in his words here. He says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Verse 13, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is also in vain. Yea, and we have found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that Christ, that, that God did raise up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Verse 16, 
bit of a summary. For if the dead rise not, then Christ did not rise. Paul is saying here that the dead will rise because Christ did rise. Daniel 12 verse 2. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. We'll take note of this last little bit here. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. We'll talk about that later. After the raising of the dead, of the dead, there'll be a judgment. First Peter 4 verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and as we've seen before, end the dead. You can't really judge someone who's still in the ground. They'll need to be risen in order to be judged. Matthew 5, 31, uh, 25, 31 to 34, talking about the judgment. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Here's our key. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Verse 33, we see a separation. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Imagery is being used here. The sheep being the righteous and the faithful, the goats are the unfaithful and those who rejected Christ. There will be rewards and punishments given at this judgment. Daniel chapter 12 again. We've already read this before. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. These people will not be given everlasting life. And those who are wise in verse 3 shall shine like the brightness of the sky above and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Reading from Revelation 20 verse 6. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Many claim that the immortal will reign with Christ in heaven, and that the kingdom will be in heaven. The Bible does not say this. The Bible clearly states that it is earth where the immortal will reign with Christ and that earth will be where the kingdom is set up. Let us consider the following quotes. Luke 1 verse 32. He, Christ, shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. David reigned on earth. So it wouldn't make sense for him to reign on David's throne in heaven. Zechariah 14, verse 9, which we've read tonight. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. Revelation 5, verse 10 reads, And hast made us, the faithful, unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth, not in heaven. The Bible clearly states that it is earth where this kingdom of Christ will be set up, not in heaven. Upon Christ's return, several more events will take place. Christ will destroy the military might of the nations. Micah 4 verse 3. And Christ shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall then beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. A time of peace here we see. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither there shall they learn war any more. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Christ will destroy the military might of the nations. Christ will redeem the land from violence upon his return. We read in Isaiah that violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. Christ will redeem the land from violence. We see this in Zechariah 14, as we have read tonight. 
and men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Christ will set up his power in Jerusalem, our topic for tonight. Isaiah twenty four twenty three. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed, when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and before his ancients gloriously. Upon Christ's return, Christ will proclaim his law from Jerusalem, and all nations to obedience he will call. And many people shall go and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Isaiah 2 verse 3. Staying with Isaiah, Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. He shall not fail nor be discouraged, nor be discouraged till, he have, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isle shall wait out for his law. So there is going to be a law that goes forth from Jerusalem. The nations will hear it. Some will want to go up and some will not. Christ will completely restore the, king, the scattered Israel and make them the centre of earth's power. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east and from the west countries. In verse 8, And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Interesting point here. Christ will supervise the building of a new and glorious temple in Jerusalem for all nations to come and worship. Zechariah 6 verse 12 to 13 reads, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Verse 13, and he, sorry, even he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. He shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Lots, and th- lots of things happen upon Christ's return. We read that the nations will have representatives who will make constant travel to Jerusalem to worship on behalf of their nation. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities, moving down to verse 22, yea, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Other occurrences of this happening can be found in Zechariah 14 and Isaiah 66. We mentioned briefly before that if, you don't, if, if the nations don't come up to worship, that we, that there will be a punishment. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 12. For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Zechariah 14. We've read this tonight. And it shall be that whoso will not come up Of all the families of the earth uh, unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, then shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feasts of of tabernacles. So it's a warning, as well as information here, that those who don't go up will not be favoured. They'll have no rain, they will perish, and there'll be plagues put upon them. And there'll be a peace of a thousand years upon earth, where humanity's problems and issues will be delivered from them. Psalm 72, In his days shall the righteous flourish, 
and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. Isaiah 25 is quite a beautiful, and verse 8 is quite a beautiful verse. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off the earth, for the Lord hath spoken it. These things have not yet come to pass, but the Bible has said that they will come to pass. These things will come to pass. Upon Christ's return, there will not only be a change in the minds and of the nations of whom those who see him, there will not only be a change in the way things operate, but the land itself will undergo drastic changes when Christ returns. Zechariah 14, which we read tonight, has a brief insight into what will happen. Verse 2 to 4 of Zechariah 14. For I which is God, will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. A prophecy, and the city shall be taken, and the house, house is rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Now verse 4 is where we want to focus on. And his, which is Christ, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half the mountain shall remove towards the north and half towards the south. There'll be a great earthquake in this land. The record in Zechariah says that the mount will cleave, which is this idea of to rend or break or rip open. Quite violent imagery here. This earthquake will cause a great valley to appear and the mount will split in two, one go- half going north, half going west. This earthquake will cause a great valley to appear running from east to west, The earthquake is spoken about in other passages, such as Ezekiel 38 and Joel chapter 3. Now, something quite interesting that has happened recently in Jerusalem, specifically in the Mount of Olives. This is a map of Jerusalem. We see the Mount of Olives is here, running north to south. We see the Dome of the Rock, which is a Muslim mosque. And Jerusalem is to the northwest. What they've found recently is an earthquake fault line running from east to west. It's all been put there by God. The pieces are falling into place, and this earthquake will start from west to east. Half of this will move to the north, the other half to the south, and there will be a great valley running across this fault line. The record in Zechariah talks of Zion, which is the city of David, seen in 2 Samuel 6, verse 6 to 7, which we've already read before. Zechariah 14, verse 10. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Haniel unto the king's winepress. Read that tonight. Psalm 68, verse 15 and 16. Specifically, verse 16. Why leap ye, ye high hills? A simple phrase. But I believe it has connection to Zion being lifted up, as spoken of in Zechariah 14. Another record of this is in in Psalm 48, verse 2. So let's focus on Jerusalem now and its prophecies concerning it. Jerusalem will become the centre of universal rule. We've already established that Christ will return. Acts 1, John 14, Acts 3. 
Now Christ will set up his kingdom. See this in 2 Samuel, this is a prophecy concerning David. In verse 12, I will establish his kingdom. This is after David has fallen asleep, after he's died. David's seed will become after him. And God will establish the seed's kingdom. We know the seed to be Christ. He shall build a house for my name. I'll establish the throne. It's a bit hard to see of his kingdom forever. Thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. We won't delve into it tonight, but this talks about the resurrection of David. Luke 1 verse 32 to 33, when the angel spoke to Mary, speaking about Jesus, he shall be great and called the son of the highest. God shall give him the throne of his father David, which shall be established and last forever. He shall reign over the house of Jacob and his kingdom shall have no end. Christ's kingdom will be set up. We see this in uh, Psalm 89. Echoes in the Bible all over the place. Take note is what, this, is what these passages are telling us to, t- to do. Christ is coming to destroy death. 1 Corinthians 15. We'll read verse 25 and 26. For he, which is Christ, must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. We've mentioned before Christ's kingdom will have no end. Isaiah 9 verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. A confirmation of God here. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This kingdom will fill the whole earth. It will never be destroyed, says Daniel. Reading from the end of Daniel chapter 2, verse 35, And the stone, which is interpreted to be Christ's kingdom, that smote Nebuchadnezzar's image, became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. had, And we see that stone, Christ's kingdom, filled the entire earth. Verse 44, This kingdom will never be destroyed. It shall stand forever. This stone that filled the whole earth really is God's purpose with the earth. We know in Numbers 14, 21, As truly as God lives, the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. We know that this glory means God's character. To to have his character filled throughout the whole earth, it will be done by having his immortal people who share in God's character, ruling and living in the kingdom age. In Christ's kingdom, there will be no more sin or death. Hebrews 2 verse 5, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. They're going to be delivered from this death. Upon Christ's return, the world will know Christ as the Lord and acknowledge God. And they shall not teach every man his neighbour, And every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Now this seems a bit confusing. They shall not teach every man his neighbour. Well, the context of this is once everyone has been, well, once the faithful have been made immortal, they will think like God. They will have have immortality and the Holy Spirit. Up until this point, People will need to know God, will need to know Christ. Once these people have no need to know because they already know, they will then teach the world about Christ. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Jeremiah 31, 31 and 33. Briefly 31, verse 31 God will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And this shall be the covenant in verse 33 that I will make with the house of Israel. 
After those days, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Jerusalem will be the centre of Christ's kingdom. And at that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk after their imaginations of their heart. Jerusalem won't just be a place of ruling. It will become a religious headquarter for the world. Jerusalem will be a great temple city. This temple city will be a place for all mankind to be united with one truth governed by God and his law. This temple city really started during Christ's ministry meaning that this isn't solely a future occurrence. During Christ's ministry in Mark 11, Christ often visited visited the temple. A specific example here, and they came to uh, and they come to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast them out that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the table of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. They would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Verse 17 is our key verse. And Christ taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations, of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. Christ found the temple overrun with people whose sole sole purpose was to make a profit of the temple worshippers. The sight of such disrespect and disregard of such a holy place caused Christ to cast them out and rebuke them, overturning the money money changers and the tables in his righteous anger. Christ taught the people in verse 17. He caused them to learn. Listen to Christ's words here. He says, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. It's quoting from Isaiah 56, verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain to make them joyful in my house of prayer. The burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Christ has identified the temple in Jerusalem as his house. He speaks of a time when all nations will recognize this as such. All nations will come to Jerusalem to worship, as we've already briefly established. We've seen the nations will have representatives who make constant travel to worship on on behalf of their nation. Christ predicted that Jerusalem would be overthrown and the destruction of the temple would ensue. Luke 21, verse 6, Christ speaks here. Verse 25, uh, sorry, verse 5 for context was people asking about things concerning the temple. Christ responds, As for these things which you have thought about and spoke of, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Moving on further uh, in Luke 21, we see that Jerusalem will be compassed with armies, Christ said. The desolation thereof is nigh. Move down to verse 24. We've already briefly had a look at this. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Here's our time frame again. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. This prophecy has several parts. The temple would be destroyed. Jerusalem would be overthrown. The Jewish people would be taken captive. The nation would then be restored. Jerusalem would be delivered from foreign domination. And the temple would be rebuilt and become centre for all nations for worship. Forty years after Christ's word in AD AD 70, the Roman power overthrew the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. In approximately AD, uh, the, in the year 691, 
A Muslim mosque was built called the Dome of the Rock, on the very site which the Temple of Christ's day stood. For Christ's words of Mark 11, saying, All all nations will know my house of prayer, this Dome of the Rock, which is standing today, will have to be replaced by a new temple, Christ's temple, which will become the centre of worldwide worship. Israel's full restoration is yet to come. 1917, 1948 and 1967 were brief snippets of the pure and total restoration that Israel would soon undergo. Romans 11, and so all Israel shall be saved. In that day, God will raise up the tabernacles in Amos 9 of David that is fallen. He will raise up his ruins and he will build it as the days of old. So what does this all mean for us? Jerusalem will become the center of universal worship And ruling for the world. We've seen what the Bible has to say and the proof that these will come to pass. But what does this really mean for us? How do we become involved with this? Well, again, the Bible has the answer. The answer to the cries for help that the world constantly calls, desperate for a saving. Remember Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. There shall shall be a time of trouble never seen before. To be associated and committed to and with Christ is the only way to be saved. Mark 16, 15 and 16 reads, And he he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Another warning here, but he that believeth not shall be damned. This is how we are saved. Through the remission of our sins and the act of repentance, we are one with Christ and have the means to salvation. John 1, Luke 3, uh, Acts 2 and Acts 8 all talk about being baptised for the remission of sins into the name of Jesus Christ after believing the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Christ Jesus, and then being baptised. This may seem like a hard thing to drop everything and just believe what Christ says and to believe that these things will come to pass, but Christ himself says in Matthew 11, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Apostle Paul here writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. First to the uh, the Jew first and then to the Greek. There will be rewards for the faithful when Christ returns. We've looked at Revelation chapter 5. He has made us kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal immortality shall be put on. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and to the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Christ Jesus our Lord. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, John says. He that believeth not shall not see life. The wrath of God will abide on him. John writes, uh, John writes that Christ is the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 1 Timothy and 1 John also have some promises to us concerning eternal life. Christ's return is unknown. Acts 1 verse 7, 6 to 7. They ask Christ saying, Lord, wilt thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? 
Christ said in verse 7, He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Mark 13, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Revelation 16, verse 15, Behold, Christ will come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. We are to be ready. We have to be ready. We do not want to miss this simply amazing and unique opportunity. So Jerusalem will become the centre of Christ's kingdom, both in rulership and worship, as we've seen tonight. Christ and his saints will be rulers in this soon-to-come kingdom. And how much we should want to be a part of this. Doing my research, I came across a rather wonderful quote about Jerusalem in the Smith's Bible Dictionary. It has some remarkable words to say about Jerusalem, and I'll read these to finish. The quote reads as such, The past of Jerusalem is overflowing with thought, but the future is equally impressive. These ruins are not always to remain. The future temple and the restored Israel, when Jerusalem shall be the throne of the Lord to all nations, claim the most earnest thought. In the day when the feet of the Lord shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which is over against Jerusalem towards the east, is full of importance. And whether we look back or forward, we have to speak of Zion as the joy of the whole earth, for salvation is of the Jews. The present missionary work in Jerusalem is deeply interesting. But surely there is no spot on earth like Jerusalem. Thank you for your attention this evening. Very interesting uh, to hear what the Bible has to Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the episode helpful. Don't forget, most of these episodes are also available as videos on our video channel, cdvideo.org. So head over and take a look. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, please get in touch or leave us a voice message. We love to hear your feedback. You can email us at bt f at cdvideo.org If you enjoyed the episode, then please share it with others. Until next time, may God bless you in your studies and your walk towards God's kingdom. Amen.